Do you know the song called First Love, Late Spring of Mitsuki? I knew this song first and I found out about the movie Late Spring later. I assumed this song got inspiration from this movie. Before I watched the movie, I imagined that the movie is about a late 20s woman falling in love for the first time with a random but gentle and good looking guest who visited her father's house while she is living without any interest in a man because of these relics. It sounds like it's going to be about an innocent woman finally finding out about true love. However, it turned out that the movie is a bit different from my imagination. The Japanese cinema and media are one of the most important elements in Japanese culture. It goes a long way in history starting in 1897 when the first foreign cameraman arrived. Japanese cinema is recognized as one of the oldest and largest film industries in the world. The late 1890s marked the birth of Japanese cinema. With the arrival of Thomas Edison's kinetoscope, it allowed other types of early media equipment like the Vitascope and the Lumiere Brothers cinematograph to flourish in Japan. The first Japanese-made film was shot in 1897. Its primary subjects were the dancing geishas and the bustling streets of Tokyo. Japanese cinema employs storytellers or benshi, a person who narrates the silent movies next to the screen. They add elements to the film through narration called sets made explanation to enhance the silent moving images. The first acknowledged master of Japanese cinema was Mijoguchi Kenji, who began his career early in the silent movie era. The actor-director completed over 50 films in the decade between 1920 and 1930, including period dramas, samurai films, kitchen sink melodramas, and love stories. The Life of Oharu, which garnered international success and won the Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival, had bridged the popularization of Japanese cinema in the West. It tackles topics like heightened emotion, family exploitation, feminism, and domesticity, which give out different types of feels for the viewers. It has an approach that touches on modern issues that weren't talked about in a conservative society. The film features a young woman, Oharu, who is the daughter of an imperial samurai. After getting caught in a relationship with a lower class man, her family gets exiled from the imperial court. This event starts a series of misfortunes, which through many episodes push her down the social ladder and track her moral descent. The plot touches on the melodramatic drama in a modern sense. This melodramatic and sad masterpiece chronicles the tragic, tough, scorned and cruel life of a Japanese woman who was exploited by the male-dominated society of her time. This scene from the movie shows one of the moments in her life when she became a concubine of a samurai lord. She was sold to the imperial army officer in exchange to redeem herself to her family. Her parents were overjoyed when they heard the news that the official wants to buy her. She bore the imperial lord a son, a son who never got to know his real mother because of her banishment. It can be seen in this video that Ohara briefly glanced the procession of her upper class son where he remained oblivious to her existence as she slowly moved from left to right to follow him and then returned to her place and began to cry. The scene really puts Ohara in a situation where she expresses emotion without much acting. The slight movement of her face and body indicates different emotions that she would feel at the moment. Considering the factors that uphold the society during that time, as we know how conservative Japanese society is, this film created a bridge and proved that it was indeed a masterpiece. Another pioneer is director Kurosawa Akira. He is the director of the 2018 BBC greatest foreign language film of all time, Seven Samurai. Kurosawa Akira's Seven Samurai is a timeless masterpiece that has been widely recognized as the greatest foreign language film ever made. The story unfolds a humble village hiring a band of samurai and protecting itself from pillage in war-ravaged 16th century Japan. 
since the wretchedness inflicted on the peasantry is evocative of all forms of human suffering, the honorable service conducted by the seven samurai takes on a universal significance. What it takes to be a trustworthy samurai is the central question that film viewers are encouraged to ponder as the story goes. Samurai identity is so fluid as to be reframed and redefined throughout the film. This dynamic of exclusivity and inclusivity forms the core of Kurosawa's storytelling. Despite its daunting length, Seven Samurai is a remarkably fast-paced movie, a series of picture-perfect visuals that manifest Kurosawa's unyielding devotion to its story and characters. What made it a masterpiece is the touch of realism and attention to detail which were evident throughout the film. Kyujo, the sixth samurai to join Kanbei's crew, is highly skilled at swordmanship. This was supposed to be sparring only, but he finishes up a challenger who forces him to fight with real swords instead of using stick when the challenger did not accept the loss. After the final battle for seven samurais to protect the village, four samurais die and three samurais who survive gaze at the graves of the dead samurais. And the youngest samurai, Katsuhiro, who is in love with Shino, the daughter of a farmer, finds her, but she just passes him by to join the other farmers while he only stares at her with a void. Even though they saved a lot of people, there is no proper reward for them. Katsuhiro is the one who devoted himself to Bushido, the way of the warrior, but it is an outdated past. This ending of the movie expresses the national mood of the past when Japan lost the war and surrendered. People shown as farmers still need to move forward with the hope of a future, with the embracement of their past. One of the surviving samurai says, In the end, we lost this battle too. The victory belongs to those peasants. Moving on to another pillar of the golden age of Japanese cinema, Ozu Yasujiro popularized a technique that became known to Western filmmakers at the time. His style consists of shooting his actors from floor height and utilizing parallelism, simple photography, and editing. His masterpiece includes Late Spring. Late Spring depicts the reluctant but inevitable path toward the marriage of 27-year-old Noriko and her desire for stability in her current life and during an amicable relationship with her father. Before I watched the movie, I imagined that the movie is about a late 20s woman falling in love for the first time with a random but gentle and good-looking guest who visited her father's house while she is living without any interest in a man because of these relics. So It sounds like it's going to be about an innocent woman finally finding out about true love. However, it turned out that the movie is a bit different from my imagination. The story is more about the relationship between Noriko and her widowed father. Noriko's father and aunt are worried about Noriko getting older like late spring. When he dies in like 20 years later, she would have to live by herself without too much of what professor father can leave her. When her aunt mentions the other woman, to introduce to her father, Noriko suddenly shows the sign of discontent and acts as if she is betrayed by her father and aunt. When her father tells her that she has to be married, she asks him in return, Who is going to clean your shirts and collars? You are not going to shave in the morning, your desk would be a mess and you will end up eating burnt rice. When he says he will remarry, <laughs> She reluctantly says yes to arrange marriage and pretends she is fine. But she tells her father one more time that she doesn't want to go anywhere and that she is happy being with him like this. She says marriage is not going to make her happy. Her father says marriage is not about happiness. He wishes her to create happiness as time goes by loving and having faith in each other. So I think that the song lyrics of Mitsuki were speaking directly to a guy to leave her alone not resisting the feeling of true love. It was also the archetype for the Shomin Geki, modern family drama 
and the cross of Western elements and traditional Japanese culture in a post-war setting film. In this scene, the Oz technique and Western elements can be seen. Noriko runs into her father's friend Onodera in Tokyo. The obliquely angled shot looks out onto the street between three dominant lines at varying distances from the camera, drawn by the concrete and grass structures of the shop fronts. Noriko emerges in the background from behind the central pole into the center of the gap before walking across the street and towards the camera, where we see her greet Onodera. Thank you for watching and special thanks to my patrons on Patreon, Stroganov and Daniel Lamirez. Like the video and subscribe for more interesting videos.